What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is a lesson for you guys on minor pentatonic scale, on how you can maneuver slash master your way using the minor pentatonic scale across the full fingerboard. So let's go. Cool. So today's video is all about the pentatonic scale, right? How to be the most comfortable with the scale and maneuver the whole fingerboard with just these five notes, right? So we'll look at the five positions of the minor pentatonic scale, which will hopefully lead us to be able to complete a three octave minor pentatonic scale, something like this. <laughs> Right? To give us the ultimate freedom on the fretboard. So for today's video, we're gonna be in G minor pentatonic, right? Like you saw in the first scene. Right? And before we to dive into the positions and the fingerings, we have to know what notes are we playing. We're playing the one, flat three, four, five, seven, one, right? Notes being G, B flat, your flat three, C, D, F natural, your flat seven degree. Back to root. And what I just played right here. We can name as position one of the minor pentatonic scale. Really, our first scale that we learn when it comes to minor pentatonic, right? We've all been there. And position one really lends itself to the whole concept of playing minor pentatonic over a major progression, right? Very much so what John Mayer is currently doing with Saab Rock and songs like Last Train Home, right? And the key to that is you're still playing your bass minor pentatonic scale. But the B flat, the minor third degree, you're gonna do a slight bend to B natural, right? Which is the major third of your G major or your G7, right? And that is what makes the two meet together. The minor pentatonic with a major chord progression, right? If not, if you're playing a major chord progression and just still playing. Over a G major, it's almost like a puzzle, right? Where the missing puzzle piece, you put in the missing slot. It fits, but it's not a perfect fit. Right? It's not a smooth fit, but by playing the same notes, and hinting this B natural from this B flat works beautifully for mixing minor pentatonic and major sounding chord progression. So now let's take a look at position two and what we can do with that position. So now we look at the minor pentatonic 
in the second position, right? What I call second position at least. And I'm just seeing it as the same scale just starting from the second degree, which in this case is the B flat, right? <laughs> And if you want to resolve, hit that G by all means. Fingering wise, I'm using a mostly my middle finger and pinky, right? This is a great exercise, especially in this position, to get your pinky involved. Right. So fingering, I'm using middle finger on this B flat, sixth fret of the low E string. Pinky, eighth fret of the low E string, this C. Index, fifth fret of the A string. Pinky, again, this flat seven, right? This eighth fret of the A string. Index, for root G, fifth fret of the D string. Pinky for this B flat octave on the eighth fret of the D string. But here, maybe your ring finger is stronger, right? So with your ring finger, you can use the strength and do this minor third to major third bend, right? Maybe your pinky isn't that strong, right? Whichever floats your boat. And then continuing up the scale, index, ring finger, right? Index, ring, index, ring. Right. And the most famous user of this position, I guess we can say, was maybe Albert King, right? The top of the notes. And then combining position two with position one. Um, you could do a lot of the same stuff here. And as you'll see in the end of this video, how we connect the two. It's really what sound of the notes do you want it to be? Do you want to be a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner? And that can dictate where you play the scales and how you build up with the scales, right? So let's check out position number three now, which, as you probably can guess, is the same minor pentatonic scale starting from the third degree, this C. So now position three, like mentioned before, is just how I see it at least, the minor pentatonic scale from the third degree, in this case being C. So we have C, D, F, G, B flat, C, D, F, G. Right? And in this position is where you can get a lot of your Robin Fordisms, right? Transitioning, for example, from like the one to the four chord. Because you can do something like, right, we're in G, now go to C. There's our four chord, essentially, right? Also, a very cool thing is that even though you're higher on the fretboard, the note thickness and the girth is still there. So if we look at the stepping out riff, right? Up here, same riff, but thicker sounding. Right? So you're playing the same things, but it's thicker. And now you have the ability to transition from one to you and three. Now let's check out position four. So now we look at position four, which I can assume you guys already found out, is 
minor pentatonic scale from the fourth degree, right? Now from the D. But you can approach it two different ways. Our home D will be this 10th fret of the low E string, right? But around here, you have two Fs, which are the flat seven degrees, right? You have one F, eighth fret of the A string, or you have the other F, 13th fret of the low E string. So it looks like this. Resolving to G, or... Same notes, just where do you want to go? Different directions. And position four lends wonderfully to more Eric Claptonisms, stuff like. Um, right. Combine if you want position four and three, like I did just there. But we'll get to there in two more scenes. <laughs> so now position five, minor pentatonic from the fifth degree, right? In this case, F. And we'll come all the way up to the 13th fret of the low E string. You can do F, G, B flat, C, D, F, G, B flat, C, D, F, G. And how I hear it, this F can do one of three things. Number one, it can just leave you hanging. Where do you want to go? Right? Number two, if you want, you can go a half fret lower, land on the E, and you can sort of spell out the four chord. Right? third thing you can do is it can go up one fret to the F sharp, which indicates the five chord, right? And really, if you master those three things, leave you hanging and want to resolve to the G, right? It can go half a fret down to the E, third degree of the four chord, or go up third degree of the five chord. And you can really play a one, four, five blues like that. Right? A very classic pentatonic lick that lands on the flat seven can be something like something like that, which really outlines the one chord as well, because you're playing the major third, five root, flat seven, right? Something like that. So now that we've seen the five positions of the minor pentatonic, let's have a better idea of how we can use those positions to our advantage and have maximum freedom on the fretboard. So now that we know the five positions of the minor pentatonic scale, right? Now the fun part. We can use this knowledge 
to our advantage and really figure out how we want to maneuver across the fretboard. This is something that I learned through time from Joe Bonamassa, right? He would be quoted as saying, learn every note on every fret for every key or scale that you're in essentially, right? So really, no matter where you are on the fretboard, you should be able to dictate where you want to go, right? And resolve back the tonic, right? So if you're right here, you can do that. like that you can do something like that you can do something like that something like that so what is the thinking behind that well that we know the notes right G B flat C D F G so the reality is we can throw all the shapes out the window. As long as we know where we're going, we have all the freedom in the world. So let me actually zoom in so we can get a better close look at the fretboard. So now that we're zoomed in on the fingerboard, I guess the idea that you want to have in your head is which way do you want to move around the fingerboard, right? Do you want to move up and down or side to side? And at that point, Really, it's which way do you want to go? Here comes an analogy. It's like driving home with the GPS. You can go the GPS way. Or you can do all your detours. Explore, but still get home. Right? Hope that was a good analogy. Again, it would be following GPS. Simple. Taking detours. Right? More freedom. And what it really comes down to is maybe playing four notes and then deciding which way you want to go. So we look at four notes, G, B flat, C, D. Our next note is F. We have one F, third fret of the D string. We also have another F, eighth fret of the A string. So if we go here, At that point, we've already changed positions, which is great, which is what we want to do. Now we can go to G. You have G, fifth fret of D, or G, tenth fret of A. If we go here, you still played one octave, but you traveled seven frets, right? Which is a great first start to maneuvering across the fretboard. If we want to play one more octave, right? We know that B flat is our next note. We can play B flat, eighth fret of the D string, C, tenth fret of the D string. And now this D, our fifth degree, we can play in two areas either seventh fret of G or twelfth fret of D right? Or so if we resolve here, it could be F, G. If we resolve here, same notes, just different areas. Right? So now we're really moving along two octaves, but over a lot of frets. Now, if we want to go one octave higher, we can do from G to B flat or G, B flat to C, 
F, sorry, D, F, G, or G, B flat, C, D, F, G. And then back to position number one. If that makes sense. It's taking these little small fragments and seeing which way do you want to go. Right? Even like that. And then having ultimate freedom with pentatonics. Let's say now we want to start from the middle of the fingerboard. From G here, we can do... Or even... So when practicing, it's really great to have the outline, the position, right? And then slowly figuring out where do you want to take it that is sort of unconventional, right? very slowly there's no rush That is today's lesson on how to master the pentatonic scale. <laughs> well, all right, guys, that is today's video on the minor pentatonic scale and how you can maneuver slash master your way across the fingerboard with an outline, right, of the five shapes and then how you can maneuver your way through all those shapes to end up from low G, third fret of the low E string, up to high G, 15th fret of the high E string, right? It's really all about how you want to move. Do you want to move across or up and down the guitar neck, right? And there's really no wrong or right way to do it. You have five notes and you can do whatever you want with them and attack them however you want with them. So if you enjoyed today's video, please press like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.